Testing, testing, testing. <laughs> All right, today we're going to do a video. It's going to be a live video, so if there's any interruption in the chat, it's just me saying hi to people. Uh, today we're going to do a video. I'm going to read off of my phone. Um, I'm not really sure why there's been this phenomenon lately, but I've been getting some uh, questions about GFCIs and installing the saunas on different circuits in your house. So the main purpose of this video is if you're working with an electrician, you can show him this video and basically shortcut your timeline to understanding what's going on. There's uh, a <clears throat> the main thing that is is happening usually when people have trouble with putting saunas on electrical circuits and it's tripping the the GFCI is uh, you know I'm gonna read some stuff I've got some notes we're gonna go through a bunch of things here but it, it's really inductive load right and so for me personally I can't advise people to do things outside of a code but for me personally if I were having a circuit put in by an electrician and I had to have um, a GFCI direct circuit put in. I would probably take that outlet out and put a regular duplex outlet in after that. And here's why. The first reason is, is very obvious. So I've got, let's get this out of the way. I've got a normal sauna behind me, right? This thing is a corner sauna. So it fits up really tight. It doesn't matter where the receptacle is. It doesn't matter if we put it in a, you know, an easy to access place or yada, yada. The first thing that's going to happen when this GFCI trips is we're gonna have to move the, pull the sauna out. <laughs> to reset it. So that's the first reason why I don't use GFCI outlets. Uh, obviously, in your area, if that's required for code, you got to do what you got to do. But I want to go through just a couple of quick points here so that you can understand uh, why your sauna might be tripping a GFCI outlet, uh, how that works. Um, this is actually really, really common. Most people have never heard of this before until they run into this issue. But if you just Google refrigerator tripping GFCI outlet, you're going to see hundreds and thousands of questions on forums and all over the place. It's very, very common for appliances to cause this to happen. I'm not an electrician, so I'm not super familiar with the verbiage from a hands-on approach or experience. I can tell you, you know, why it happens, how to fix it, and what to do. So I've got some notes here. I'm going to read a couple of things to you guys also instead of paraphrasing in my own words just to make sure that it's super accurate. If you have your electrician watch this video, I guarantee you it will definitely cut down on the time that it takes for you to fix this. The first thing is, um, you know, why do appliances like infrared saunas cause electrical issues with GFCI circuits? This is not abnormal. Refrigerators, freezers, um, anything with a motor, you can Google, you can easily find this stuff online. Google like sump pump tripping GFCI. <laughs> this is very, very common in basements. Um, and you'll see some examples of that. The biggest thing is, um, let's see where my notes here. I've already talked about if it does trip and you have to disassemble a sauna to reset. Like this is, I guess you can't see it off camera, but if you had a sauna that was built into the wall, the last thing that you would want to do is install a GFCI outlet behind there and then you assemble this thing and then a month from now, for some reason, it triggers. A lot of people think, well, oh, well, I'm not safe. That's not necessarily true. I'm going to get into why. Code will require this if you're doing renovations to pass inspection. Um, but this is what's happening. Inductive loads or what a lot of people call load lag uh, is when alternating current lags behind alternating voltage when the current flows into the load. So if you need a GFCI for inspection, there's kind of no way around this. Uh, like I said, I can't advise other people to do this, but I would usually take out the GFCI after inspection, replace with regular outlet. Uh, there is something called a snubber circuit. If you want to keep everything up to code, ooh, ooh, let me turn off that email. That audio is probably coming through. Sorry about that. Uh, there is a snubber circuit. Um, you can show that to your electrician. He'll know what it is. And um, what's... Oh, yeah, yeah, too many alerts here. One second here. Okay. So what's really happening is um, if you have a GFCI that's in series with other outlets on a, on a particular circuit or it's a dedicated circuit and there's more than one outlet, uh, this, this might help shed some more light on what's happening there are line and load terminals on a GFCI receptacle. And if the nuisance receptacle is dedicated for the appliance, sauna, refrigerator, whatever it is, and is second in the circuit, right? Like it's not first in the series, take the GFCI out of the box, remove it from the, uh, remove the wiring from the load side and connect them to the line terminals. Uh, that probably won't make sense to you, but your electrician will know exactly what that is. Purchase another GFCI and place it at the next receptacle in the circuit and wire it accordingly incoming to line, outgoing to load. This will likely fix that problem. If not, you could also have a snubber circuit and that would um, like help you get through that without having to change everything. But like I said, 
easiest thing to do is ditch those things. A lot of people think that they're at risk of shock with, um, uh, you know, uh, without a GFCI. And generally, you're not at risk of shock with proper breakers that aren't out of date. <laughs> it's the older houses with old wiring and things like that that are really pose a risk. Uh, or unless you plan on turning your sauna into a swimming pool, right? Infrared saunas or dry saunas. So they're not steam saunas. There's no moisture in the sauna except what is sweat out of coming out of your body. Uh, there's no steam pot. Uh, there's no nothing. I mean, I suppose you could take a 55 gallon drum and flood the thing and uh, you could create a connection with your feet to an electrical circuit that could shock you. But short of that, I mean, you have towels covering the floor. You're sitting on towels. You're basically insulating every drop of moisture between yourself and the wood. The moisture would have to go through the wood <laughs> to get to the electrical circuits, which is extremely uncommon. But I guess if you want to be really nitpicky. Uh, I'm going to read you a couple of excerpts um, from people dealing with this situation for other appliances, not necessarily for saunas. Um, uh, and, and just to kind of recap on the GFCI part, regular circuit breakers trip when maximum current for the circuit is exceeded. This protects against circuit overheating and causing a fire, but does not protect, protect against shocks to people in all conditions. That is true. A GFCI outlet trips when outgoing and returning current differs. The only way for the outgoing and returning current to be less is if the current is being drawn off the circuit to ground, which a human receiving a shock is exactly that. Thus, ground fault circuit interrupter, GFCI. But some high power complicated equipment like refrigerators, motors, saunas, things like that can absorb enough current <clears throat> for a short period of time to create a difference in the outgoing and returning current at the GFCI and thus trip it, which is exactly what happens all the time. Nothing wrong with the equipment. This is just what's, what's going on. Someone mentioned it already, but refrigerators are inductive loads, meaning current is being absorbed and generated out of phase with the AC current. Uh, some pump motors, like we talked about earlier, are known to trip GFCIs as well. But coder installers uh, sometimes insist that a GFCI uh, is required for code safety, and which would cause uh, you know, something like a refrigerator leaking or a flooded basement um, to trip the GFCI if that were to happen. In a, in, a, in a sauna application, that is highly, highly, highly unlikely. Uh, so some people were emailing me and were a little freaked out like, hey, if I don't have a GFCI, you know, is, is one of my kids going to get shocked or electrocuted or something like that? Short of you having a hole in your roof and the sauna filling up with rain, that is extremely unlikely. As long as you don't have a house with older wiring, uh, as long as you don't have a home with um, fuses instead of circuit breakers. I mean, these are applications where I would be worried uh, I'd actually be worried about a lot more things than just not having a GFCI for my sauna. Um, but these are <laughs> these are instances where, um, you know, any skilled electrician would advise you. Again, I'm not an electrician. I can't give you electrical advice specifically, but I have a lot of experience with installing these things and running into issues and stuff like that. And this has been, um, you know, my solution or different solutions that you can deploy. Uh, again, if you wanted to have the electrician create a snubber circuit, they can do that and you can make your actual dedicated circuit play nice with the capacitors or the power supply of the particular sauna that you have. Uh, some saunas are more susceptible to this than others. Um, generally, the more complicated ones with an actual computer inside and a couple different controllers, they're going to have multiple sets of um, capacitors and different power supplies for different things. You'll have stuff like um, there's different voltages for, for different things when you have something that has a computer in it, when it has intelligence, when it's um, more technologically advanced, you could say. There's going to be a separate little voltage power supply for um, audio system. You might have something for internet or Wi-Fi. Uh, the Bluetooth is usually not an issue that's part of the stereo. But then you might also have something for uh, like an actual controller, if it has a TV in it or LCD screen or things like that. When you line all that up, the way that that performs on the circuit generally causes more issues than not. Um, and these are some of the saunas that are more commonly having issues, um, you know, tripping GFCIs uh, when other ones don't. So not an issue, but nothing to be alarmed about. Just wanted to make this video because I don't know how to type all this stuff out uh, via email. And it's it's kind of weird to respond with strange terminology that most people have never heard of before. Until I ran into this issue, I had never heard of this stuff before. But over the last few years of, you know, hundreds of customers installing saunas, you know, one out of 10, two out of 10 is bound to run into issues. Some of it's due to older houses, things not being up to date. And then other situations are, you know, have an electrician come in, they're trying to do a good job for the homeowner, they want everything to be up to code. Uh, but people aren't planning ahead, like, 
you know, they just hire them for the job, but they don't actually show them the equipment or they get it done a couple of months before the sauna arrives. And then they run into these issues after it's installed. And then people are freaking out because they think something's wrong with the equipment or you got to pull one of those big bad boys out from the wall after you've put it together, which is no fun. If you guys have questions on this or you have, um, you want future videos, uh, I mean, I can disassemble one of these and show you some of the stuff that we're talking about if needed. I think this pretty much covers it though. If you have questions, use the comments and uh, have a great day. We'll see you in tomorrow's video.